Hi, this is Josh with Retro TV One Tech, and today I've got something really fun for you. I installed Windows 3.1 on my iPhone. Check this out. Yeah, it even does the ta-da sound. So super cool. And uh, you can actually see if I move my finger around, I can actually interact with it and move the mouse around and load programs. I can even load paint. There it is. <laughs> I can load the old paint program. Now you might be saying, wait, it's so small. I actually can turn it into landscape mode and I can see it a lot better. And then you can bring up a keyboard and all kinds of things, but just super fun and uh, maybe not super useful, but uh, pretty amazing that you can run real Windows 3.1 on an iPhone. So, you know, I can even pick the little line draw tool and I can just draw. Now, before I show you how I did this, I want to even show you that when I exit, it even does the famous chimes sound for exiting windows. Check this out. Just so cool. And you can see I've got DOS installed on my iPhone as well, because obviously Windows 3.1 runs on top of MS-DOS. And so I do have DOS installed, and I'll show you all about how I did that. Uh, but first of all, I do want to show you this is just a regular iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max. So it's just a standard one. It's actually the light blue one. And you can hear that I just got a text, so it's definitely a regular iPhone. Um, but yeah, just the 13 Pro Max standard, and uh, it runs DOS, and it runs Windows 3.1. So how did I do this? Well, I've got an emulator on here called iDOS 2. Of course, the iPhone runs on an ARM-based processor, and Windows needs an x86 Intel style processor to run, so it can't run natively, it does have to run on an emulator. So the emulator is called iDOS 2. Now, this isn't something you can just download off the iOS App Store, unfortunately. Apple doesn't allow emulators in general. Uh, this one was on there and they took it off, so I have installed it via this, this app called Alt Store. And it's pretty easy to do, I'll show you how to do it. Um, it does need to be refreshed every seven days unless you have a developer account, but you can also install Delta, which is a really cool uh, emulator that will emulate lots of classic systems. You can even install Dolphin, which will play GameCube games and all kinds of stuff. So pretty cool and uh, pretty flexible app, but uh, it does require Alt Store to do it. My phone is not jailbroken in any way. Um, you know, no, no trickery of that kind going on. Um, I want to make sure my device is really stable and sometimes jailbreak makes it unstable and makes some apps not work. So uh, this is just called side loading, which is basically just loading apps onto your phone that are not cleared by Apple, but it's totally safe. It's a, it's an app that's been vetted by the community and everything like that. So if you want to try this on your phone, um, I will show you how. So first of all, you have to install alt store. So to install alt store, you just go to altstore.io and then this window will come up. And uh, at that point, all you have to do is scroll down and you can see a little bit more information about it. You could click the get alt store button up there, but it shows you some of the featured apps and things uh, that you can do with this really cool program here. This one even has like a virtual machine in it and there's dolphin. Uh, it just talks a little bit about side loading. Delta is the one that plays all the classic games. You can play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all kinds of different things on even Game Boy. Uh, these are self-published apps, so anybody can make those, and then you can see the developers there. Uh, but the the uh, important part here is uh, the download section. So you can see there's a download section for Mac OS, if you have a Mac, or uh, one for Windows. So I did the Windows download and installed it onto uh, my Windows 10 machine. They also have an install guide here, uh, so if my video um, maybe leaves out a step or something, you can click on install guide here and it'll show you very much step by step how to install this program on your computer. So once you get Alt Store installed, you want to launch the app and then you want to come over here to your taskbar right by your clock, which on mine is on the bottom right of the screen. Click on the Alt Store icon here, which kind of looks like a diamond, uh, and you'll see the uh, Alt Store context menu here. And uh, I have mine checked to automatically launch it start up because it actually will update um, your apps and every, every seven days via Wi-Fi if it works correctly. Um, and then you'll go here to install Alt Store. I need to plug in my phone to show you how that looks. Uh, this is for some other apps that Windows 3.1 doesn't require this JIT. Uh, checking for updates and then, of course, if you just want to close it. All right, now I've got my phone plugged in. So if I go up here to install Alt Store, it will say Josh's iPhone. Now I've already installed it, but if you click on this, it will basically go through the setup. Um, and most of it takes place on your phone. You do have to type in your Apple password, uh, and that password is only sent directly to Apple. Again, this has been vetted by the community that they're not stealing your password or anything like that. I know that's a little nerve-wracking, but 
um, it does just send that password directly to Apple uh, to verify the install on your phone. And so once that's done, uh, then you'll have the alt store icon on your phone home screen. I'm gonna do the rest of this installation tutorial here on uh, screen recording mode so that you can see it a little bit better. I already showed you, of course, with my other camera that I really was running uh, Windows here and DOS on my, uh, on my iPhone. So it'll be easier for you to see everything through screen recording mode. So you can see on my phone, uh, I've already got my apps here in an emulators folder. And so everything's sitting there ready to go. So you go ahead and launch Alt Store. And Alt Store actually doesn't by default have iDOS um, in its browsing section here in its app list. So you can see all the different apps that are already here. Lots of great stuff, but iDOS is not included by default. Um, and so you, what you do is you actually need to go and download iDOS. And so you do that. Uh, there's a GitHub page, and I'll link it in the description. Uh, and you can see right here under iDOS 2.1, there's iDOS.IPA. So you'll download that, just click on it, it'll download it to your phone, and then it's all set. Then we go back over to Alt Store, and we're going to hit this little plus button at the top left corner, and it'll show you all the apps um, that are in your recent downloads folder here, which is really good. Um, so I actually have two versions of iDOS, and uh, maybe I should update mine. I think it's probably the same, but they're slightly different names. And you just tap on that, and it will install it onto your device. You may have to have your phone plugged into your computer to make that work. I'm not really sure. Uh, sometimes it'll work over Wi-Fi, and sometimes it won't. A lot of times it's just easier to have your phone plugged into your computer to get these things installed uh, the first time. All right, now that we've got iDOS set up, we can load the program. And you'll see how it starts there. You can see it's actually based on DOSBox and it goes through a little startup program and it starts with a joystick, but you can tap on the little icon next to the word CPU and you get your keyboard. And I already have some files on here, but you can do the directory command. You can hear it makes the keyboard noises, which is super cool. You can turn that on and off, but you can see there I have my directory um, and I've already got several files and things on here and I will show you how to copy files to um, IDOS. It's actually not that hard to do. So what you're going to want to do is download anything that you want from Safari and it'll go into your downloads folder on your files app. Uh, the files app on the iPhone is really useful. So you can see there, got my downloads folder and all these different things I've downloaded. And um, if you want to copy something over into the folder, like I've got a test drive here, if I wanted to copy that over, I just long tap on that, hit copy, and then I go back all the way over into on my iPhone. I tap on on my iPhone. There's an iDOS2 folder. And then I long press here again, and there's a paste command. And so I can paste this file right into my um, iDOS. And then of course to unzip it, I just tap it and it'll unzip it. And I've already got this on my folder here, so I'm not gonna unzip it again. But you can see it's super easy to actually transfer files back and forth just using the, the stock iPhone files app. Anything you want to download, you can download it directly on Safari and just copy it over using this files app. And as long as it's in this iDOS2 folder, it will show up in the iDOS app. So back over in iDOS, you can see if I do the directory again, you should see that zip file that I just copied over. Yep, there it is. Test D, uh, the tilde one dot zip. And of course, uh, DOS only does eight character file names, so it shortens and abbreviates them uh, if they get too long. And you can actually rename from the iPhone Files app, if you don't want to type out all those characters and stuff, you can actually rename uh, your files, which is super, super helpful. But right now, we want to install Windows. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go over to Internet Archive, and you're going to download this Windows 3.11 and DOS 6.22 bootable CD-ROM image. It'll download an ISO file. So you're going to scroll down and find that download. And you can see, just click on ISO image. And you want, actually, you don't want the DOS one. You want Windows 3.1. You tap on that and it will download it. Now, I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not gonna hit download, but you download it, it'll go to your downloads folder. And then back on your downloads folder, uh, you'll see this Windows 3.11.iso here, and you're gonna copy that over into your iDOS app. You go back to on my phone, and you're gonna paste it into iDOS. And again, I've got it here. I've actually renamed it to windows.iso just to make it easier uh, to type out the name of it. All right, so back over into iDOS. Now we need to actually mount the image file. 
All right, so in order to mount the image, you got to type out this kind of complicated command. Uh, it's IMG MOUNT, or image mount, D, and that's the drive letter we're going to assign it to, or the virtual drive. And then C colon backslash windows.iso. And remember that windows.iso is whatever you named your Windows ISO file. So if you renamed it, you could even rename it win if you don't want to type out all that. But it's got to be the exact same file name or it won't work. So be really careful about that one. And then dash T for type and then ISO. And make sure you have the spacing and all that correct. Hit enter. And there you go. So now it looks like drive D is mounted there and MSCDX is installed, which is super cool. That's the Microsoft CD extension. So now we can actually go into the D drive and now we're mounted on the Windows CD image here. So there you go. And now we'll be able to run Windows setup. So all you have to do is type setup. And there we go. We are in Windows for Workgroups 3.11 setup. Super cool. I mean, literally just so old school. All right, so I'm gonna flip the screen into landscape mode so you can see a little bit better. And here we are in Windows setup. I've got my virtual keyboard up and I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and do the express setup just to make it easier, but you can do custom if you want. It works just the same as regular Windows setup. We recommend that you set it up in the following directory. That's interesting. I'd probably rather just set it up in the Windows directory. So we're gonna go ahead and go into just regular Windows. Not really sure why it did that, but that's fine. All right, so there we go, C slash Windows. Well, there we go. I can remove the keyboard here and it's copying files. And of course, you know, part of me wants to hear the CD spin up or something like that, you know, or the floppy disk noise or whatever. But of course, you're not going to hear that because it's uh, just loading it virtually from the iPhone memory. But it's super cool. This literally DOS box or DOS, the emulation actually thinks there's a Windows CD in and it actually Windows setup actually think it's thinks it's being installed on a regular MS DOS machine. It has no idea anything is is wrong or different at all. So we'll be back in a bit after the files are done copying. All right, it looks like the files are done and setup is starting. It's gonna detect the network card. <laughs> I don't have a network card, but I know it's Windows for work groups, so. Ah, there we go. All right. And to, uh, by the way, to move the mouse, you literally just uh, swipe around the screen and you can tap uh, to use the buttons. So let me bring up my keyboard again. I can type in my name. going to use Josh to make it easier. All right, and I'm not even going to do product number or any of that stuff. I'm just going to hit continue. Uh, and we'll hit continue here again. And there it goes. Literally, Windows 3.1 setup. That is so cool. Yeah, that's pretty fast. <laughs> and of course, we don't have a printer. I see Apple Laser Writer and all those. It's really funny, all those classic printers on there. And again, you just use your finger to swipe around and then just tap to do the mouse button click. So we're going to um, just hit install, no printer. Okay, there we go. Network settings, um, let's see. We're just gonna continue. We're not gonna do any network. And there we go. <laughs> That's so cool. And you can even do a Windows tutorial and stuff. We're gonna skip that for now. So skip the tutorial. All right, so we are going to restart the computer. Let's see what happens. All right, note to self, um, don't do the reboot thing because DOSBox doesn't know what to do with that. It just kind of froze on that reboot requested screen, but we are all good still. So let me run a directory and just make sure that everything is where it should be. We should have a Windows folder and we do. So we just need to do CD Windows. That means change directory if you're not familiar with the DOS commands. And I'm gonna go ahead and do landscape mode so you can see a little better. So let's change directory into Windows. And then of course, if you remember from Windows versions past, several Windows versions past, you just type in win. So here we go, let's load this thing up. It works. <laughs> we got Windows, yay, so awesome. And you can see I can just move my mouse around and do all kinds of stuff. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, there's no sound. Yeah, we actually have to install the sound separately. 
we do see that all the uh, control panel stuff is there. Everything's there as it should be. You can minimize apps just like normal. Uh, you can even go into games. And it, of course, it's got uh, Solitaire, Minesweeper, all the things. Solitaire looks just like it should. I like the robot deck. Let's see if I can change over that. Robot cards. <laughs> Takes a little bit of getting used to with the mouse, uh, but it works pretty well. So there you go. We've got robot cards on Solitaire. How much fun is that? We can just minimize that. All kinds of things. So right now we can do anything we want on Windows without sound. Uh, there's even hearts and Minesweeper, like I said, Windows setup. Some of the things, of course, won't work, like Print Manager and things like that. We don't have, you know, all the things installed on here, but uh, most of it really does work. So that's pretty cool. So now I will show you how to install the sound. All right, so first of all, you're gonna to need to download Sound Blaster 16 drivers, and I will link those in the description. Go download those and copy them into your IDOS folder like I showed you how to do on the Windows ISO file. So you just copy it over the exact same way, download it on your phone, again, copy it over into the folder for IDOS using your iPhone files app. So copy it over there. And then I did that and I unzipped it into the uh, SB folder here. So we're just going to hit CD SB. And then from there, we can do a directory, but I'm just going to type install to save a little bit of time here. And by the way, this does install in DOS and not Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And there it goes. All right, we're going to go into landscape mode here. I'm going to hit the keyboard and we're going to hit enter to continue setup. So we want the full installation. And there it goes. Now, one thing we do need to change is our Windows 3.1 path. You can see it says Microsoft 3.1 path none, but we actually need to make sure that we have that path here. So we're gonna go down, hit enter, and it should find the path on its own. If not, type C slash Windows. Hit enter again, and those settings should be correct. And so now we're going to press enter again, and it should do its thing. And I know the keyboard's covering this up a little bit, but yes, we do want to use that directory of SB16. Check an audio card. And yes, those settings are correct. And here it goes. Going to copy some files and get everything all set and ready to go. Make this go a little faster, I am going to increase the CPU cycles. You can see it says 3000. I'm going to go ahead and increase that to like 10,000. There, I got it. So now it's going to be a lot faster. There it goes, it's analyzing and changing up the config sys. And Auto exec bat files. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit backup. So just hit enter on backup because we wanna let it go ahead and change everything up. So it's copying all the Windows drivers over. All right, so everything looks good. We're gonna hit enter. And of course it says remember to reboot. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn off DOSBox and turn it back on. So we'll go ahead and swipe to close the app and then swipe to reopen it. All right, we are reloaded into DOSBox, still in landscape mode. We've got Windows ready to load up and we should get some sound here when we start. Yeah, there we go. All right, audio program group is created, excellent. And of course you can hear the startup sound is not the correct tada startup sound, so we need to fix that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go over here into control panel and sound. Now, outside of the uh, video here, I went ahead and copied over tada.wave. It actually doesn't install with Windows, but you can see it right over here, tada.wave. So just search um, on Google, just search for tada.wave. You can download that and then copy it over into your IDOS Windows folder. So copy it over into IDOS, but also into the Windows subdirectory here. 
And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to go down here to the bottom where it says Windows Start, and we're going to change that to to DAW, so we have the correct startup sound. And then our exit sound, of course, still is going to be chimes. So all of that should be good. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. And we should be able to close all this and relaunch Windows. So let's give that a shot. So we exit Windows, we have the correct sound, which is awesome. All right, so we're going to type in Win. We're going to reload it, and we should have the correct ta-da sound. Yay, we did it. <laughs> I love that sound. That is exactly how it should be. So I don't know. I just got used to loading up Windows with that ta-da sound. And I'm not really sure why these particular installations, all the ones I seem to try, have the chimes as the startup and the ending sound. So either way, we got ta-da on there now, and all is well. So I want to do one more thing before we wrap up this video. I want to go over here into Accessories, and I want to load up the media player here. If we go down, you can actually see the icon. There it is. This is the older, probably one of the original versions of Windows Media Player, and I want to load Canyon.mid. The mouse is a little bit hard to use here. All right, so it's a little bit easier to find if I just change to MIDI files. Canyon.mid. Hit OK, and we should have some awesome, awesome Canyon sounds. Here we go. Yeah! <laughs> sounds so good. You can tell I'm still on iPhone because I've got the iPhone volume control there. It really does sound good for an emulation of MIDI. All right, well, that's basically everything. And again, you can do whatever you want with this. You know, you can go through, uh, you can play games on it. You can go through the different accessories and play around with those. Um, you can go to the Notepad app. The Write, you know, Write looks the same as it always has. You can write documents and stuff. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can do it. If you want to, you can load up Notepad, which hasn't changed. There's still a Notepad in Windows 10, which is awesome. And you can load that up and uh, save files and do pretty much whatever you want to do with this. So it's a lot of fun, and it's just kind of a novelty to have Windows 3.1 on your iPhone. So I am pretty happy with that. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, if there's any questions, please leave those in the comments down below. Or if I missed a step, let me know that in the comments as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you want to try this on your own, let me know how it goes. Or if you have any favorite memories of Windows 3.1, uh, let me know those in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'll have a lot more fun things coming up very, very soon. Also, be sure to hit the like and all those uh, YouTube things. We um, really appreciate your support. So that's all for now, everybody. Enjoy that tech and keep it retro.